from a classical economic perspective, $100 is worth $100, whether it's coming or going. But people's psychological economic evaluations are often a little bit irrational. For example, people are more moved psychologically by the loss of $100 than they are moved by the gain of $100. That's a phenomenon called loss aversion. It's now treated as if it's a kind of a constant in human judgment. But what we thought is that actually it might not work that way. From an evolutionary perspective, loss aversion should make sense under some circumstances. You have one less rabbit than you need to feed your family. That's a very bad thing. It's, it's worse to lose one rabbit than to gain an extra rabbit more than you actually need it. One is starvation. But there are circumstances when you would expect that human beings shouldn't be loss averse. What we find with animals is that during mating season, males tend to engage in very elaborate displays. If male animals are going to attract females, they have to show off their qualities. They have to show off that I have good genes, I have nice feathers, I have you know, beautiful fur, I have, I have big antlers or whatever. With human beings, we show off our creativity and our intelligence, uh, our wealth. So we wanted to see what does this do to classical economic decision making. Brought people into the laboratory and we put them in one of several different conditions. In one condition, we had them in a mating frame of mind. So imagine yourself on a, a vacation, beautiful island, it's towards the end of your vacation and you meet someone who you're highly attracted to. You can't stop talking to this person. You end up finding an excuse to have dinner together, and it ends with a romantic kiss on the beach. There's another condition in which people put in a self-protective frame of mind. Imagine yourself alone at night in your bedroom, and all of a sudden you hear an intruder inside. And you hear the intruder slowly coming up the stairs. The door opens, and there's a shadowy person standing in the doorway. We also had a control condition whereby they would imagine organizing their desk. Now after putting people in these different frames of mind, we have them make the standard economic decisions. How happy would it make you feel to win $100? How sad would it make you feel to lose $100? In the control condition, we find what's typically found. People are loss averse. But all that changes in the mating frame of mind, but for men only. Mating-minded men became more interested in gains, the gains loomed larger than comparable losses. For women, the manipulation of mate seeking had no effect. Putting them in a mating frame of mind makes them actually more loss averse. And it's not just that men, any form of arousal causes them to become less concerned with losses, because if you, when you make men fearful, they do the same thing women do, they become even more loss averse. At one level, this all seems very irrational. Whether I'm feeling fearful or whether I'm feeling uh, sexually interested, why should that influence decisions about my investments? On the other hand, uh, this apparent irrationality is really sort of deeply rational. If the environment that we're in is dangerous, it makes sense to pull back from that environment and not take very large risks. If the environment provides interesting opportunities, like a mating environment would provide, especially for men who don't get that many opportunities, uh, it would make sense for the men to take some additional risks in order to take advantage of those opportunities. The new findings are very exciting because they suggest that standard economic decisions can be drastically altered by evolutionarily, functionally relevant circumstances. Biases that our ancestors developed millions of years ago affect decisions we make today that will influence our finances years into the future.